Sonos have shown us that the speakers you buy now probably won't be the same speaker you own in a couple of years. Now that could be a good or bad thing. Hey team, I'm Josh. In this video we'll discuss the recent changes Sonos has made, but more importantly, the changes they should make to give us a better user experience. Let's get to it. This whole video is sparked by the latest firmware updates from Sonos, which has changed the sound profile of the Sonos Arc massively. They were trying to get better vocals, but have really lowered the sub and overall volume output. In the forums, Sonos have officially acknowledged the issue, but haven't given any date to when it will be fixed. An easy way to remedy this would be by giving us the option to roll back the firmware before all these changes were made, or push out a new update that has the older sound profile, which many of us enjoyed. In future, Sonos shouldn't force an update that requires us to change the sound profile without giving us the option to keep the existing one. It would be as easy as including a sound profile drop down in the S2 app that lets us select original or the new one which should be placed in beta while they work on it. Many ARC owners have spent hours fine tuning the EQ settings and output levels and because of this update they have to start that whole process again. Further from this point, I understand that Sonos makes all its products to be user friendly for the masses, but there's many of us that would like more control over our speakers. I kind of see this being implemented through the likes of an advanced mode that we can access to change settings such as individual channel level, Sonos made sound modes, as well as custom sound modes that we can set up to our liking. Users will be able to create one lot of settings for music and another for movies. Changing between these presets has to be easy, so add a sound mode option either in the speaker settings or within the system tab of that specific speaker to give us the quick switching ability. Another issue is that Android users aren't as well looked after as those using iOS, so to change that, here's a few things to add. First is the issue around TruePlay tuning. I understand that there are many more Android devices available with different microphones, so it would take a lot of money and resources to cover them all, but you could create a wired tuning microphone like most amplifiers and Bose soundbars that gives us similar results to how it's currently done with an iPhone. Whether you charge extra for that microphone or include it in the box, that's up to Sonos, but at least give Android users the option other than just saying, use a friend's iPhone. Adding Bluetooth and Chromecast audio will also go a long way to pleasing those without an iPhone. On that point, within the S2 app, music services aren't nearly as good as the official apps, such as Apple Music and Spotify, so adding Chromecast and Bluetooth means Android users get to use the official apps, which are way more user-friendly. Moving on to physical additions for future soundbars. HDMI inputs will be a great inclusion and one of the major benefits of the Samsung Q990B which I compared against the Sonos Arc last week. It allows the user the ability to get Atmos content from their streaming device without an eARC enabled TV or purchasing extra equipment. DTS support all the way up to DTS-X is a must for those who watch a lot of Blu-rays and definitely something Sonos should add soon to keep up with the competition. Broadening the speakers available for use as rear speakers would be a great improvement. I can see people using a pair of Sonos Moves, Roams, or even the Rays as surrounds if Sonos unlocked this feature. The Sonos Amp is an underutilized piece of equipment within the home theater space. I installed plenty of these at my previous job to get music throughout the customer's house, but there were many times I could have used the Sonos Amp if it had a center speaker output. Sonos claims that the current amp gives you a phantom center speaker, but the dialogue is nowhere close to having an actual speaker in the middle. Staying on the subject of amps, it would be awesome if you could let us use the amp for Atmos speakers. This would give you another point of difference over other soundbar manufacturers. Think about it, how cool would this be? Sonos Arc in the front, one or two subs, rears in the back, four Atmos height speakers overhead connected to two amps. Boom, you're selling way more amps at that point, plus you're giving customers the option to use their existing in-ceiling speakers as part of their Sonos setup. The other two highly sought after products from Sonos include a mini sub to pair with the Beam Gen 2 and Ray, as well as Dolby Atmos enabled Sonos Ones to complete the surround sound package. Sonos is likely to announce the mini sub towards the end of 2022, which is a much needed product in their lineup, mainly down to its cheaper price tag when compared to the full size sub and its overall smaller footprint. There are also leaked 3D mock-ups of potential Atmos enabled speakers that could be used as surrounds with Sonos soundbars. We don't have many details on that yet, and it wouldn't likely come out to at least 2023 if these leaks are true, so subscribe to Archway Tech so you don't miss out on any future updates. With that, let me know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like Sonos to implement. I will be sending them this video, so the continued dialogue down below will be helpful. Anyway, that's all from me. See you guys soon.